Last time I reviewed the concepts of incremental value at risk and how this technique might be used to help inform our decision making. This time I take you through how to code this for use in MetaTrader. Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. As a trader, you'll benefit from cost-effective market access via multiple trading platforms and APIs. These enable trading and investing in any US stock, over 60 of the most liquid futures contracts, FX and CFDs. You can even diversify your portfolio by buying and selling other traders' strategies as investable assets themselves. So, if all of that sounds interesting, Learn more by clicking on the link top right now or find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. Let's get straight into the code and take a look at how incremental value at risk can be implemented. Now it's important to know that I haven't made any changes at all to the risk management module that we've used previously. This is still exactly the same. The only thing I've done in order to calculate the incremental value at risk is to make changes in the calling script. So let me just talk you through the concepts here. We have a current portfolio with four assets. Some of those are long, represented by the positive lot sizes here. And one of those, euro dollar, is short, represented by this negative value here. And if we think of this as our current portfolio, so the positions that are already open on our account, and in exactly the same way as we've done previously, I'm going to call the calculate VAR method from the risk management module, pass that a list of all of those current assets and the current position sizes, and then access the value at risk using the multi-position VAR property that's declared as public as part of the risk management module. And so this now gives us our baseline. This is the value at risk right now before we open up any other positions. But up above here in the input parameters, you'll notice I've added two new variables. One is for the proposed symbol, and I've just set that as a default as New Zealand dollar Japanese yen with an associated proposed position size, so 0.12 in this case. And again, in the same way, if this is positive, it means it's going to be a long position and negative represents a short position. And so in order to incorporate this into the analysis of the value at risk, this needs to be added into the list of assets that we looked at a moment ago. And so here I'm declaring a new array which I'm calling proposed portfolio assets. And I'm resizing that to the current size of the portfolio plus one. And the plus one, of course, is to accommodate this additional proposed position so that we can analyze the effect of that before we decide if we should open it or not. I'm then copying in the existing portfolio array into that proposed portfolio array. So in this example, it will copy the values that we see here into the first four cells of those new arrays. And then in the final cell, I'm going to put the new symbol and the new position size. So we now have a brand new array with five positions and five lot sizes, which incorporate that proposed one. I've then just got some diagnostics here, which just to make sure everything's working correctly, it iterates through this new array and saves the information about the positions and the position sizes to a string, which we then output here with the final message box, just to make sure that the code here is processing all of that correctly. And then we do exactly the same as we did here, but this time for the new proposed arrays. So we'll get a value at risk for all five positions if that fifth one were allowed to open. And then it's as simple as this 
to calculate the incremental value at risk. It's simply the proposed minus the current. So if that's a positive value, it means the risk has increased. If it's a negative value, then it means the risk has gone down, which of course can happen through the power of diversification when we're adding a position that is uncorrelated or negatively correlated to that existing portfolio. And then we simply output all of that information to the user interface, which includes the position diagnostics that I mentioned a moment ago, the current value at risk, the proposed value at risk, and of course the incremental VAR. So let's just compile that, make sure we have no errors. Now if we switch over to MT5, we can run that incremental value at risk script. We'll keep the top three at their defaults here. And for now, we'll keep the proposed position as Kiwi Yen with a positive value of 0.12. And here's the result. So the top part of the message box here is the output of the diagnostics that I mentioned. So here in the first four places, we have what we're calling a current portfolio. And then the last position here for Kiwi Yen as you can see is the proposed. And so because we've outputted that here, we know that we've correctly set the values in those proposed arrays. And so we can trust these values that we see here. So the current value at risk is 148 pounds, 46 pence. And if we were to add this additional position here, then that would increase the risk to £156.50, so an incremental VAR of just over £8. So should we open this new position or not? Well, that's something, of course, that I can't answer for you as an individual because this will depend on what your own risk appetite, your own risk rules are. So does this mean that your risk threshold has now been exceeded? If it has, then no, you shouldn't open this position. But if this is still well within your threshold, then yes, why wouldn't you? Now, there are other ways of looking at your decision making here. So rather than using a threshold value, whereby if a position increases the risk above that level, you don't take it, whereas if it stays below, you can, you might also consider some slightly more sophisticated rules whereby you might say you will allow a position to increase the value at risk, but only by a certain percentage. So if the position increases the value at risk, let's say by 10% or 15%, then you'd see that as acceptable. But if it's any more than that, then it probably suggests that it's too correlated to the existing portfolio, and you might want to avoid that position. So what I've given you here are the tools to perform the calculations. How you implement those in practice really does depend on your own approach to risk management. So they are things that I can't answer for you. But let's now go back to the code and just look at a, another example here. So instead of having these four positions open in our current portfolio, I'm going to uncomment these lines here and take these out just to show an extreme example of maybe one of your strategies. So this might have been, for example, based on a trend following strategy, whereas this one might be based on a mean reverting strategy. And so because both of these positions are equal and opposite, that should reduce any risk. Basically one as hedged against the other. So just to make sure that the calculation is working correctly, let's just compile that. Return to MT5. And here you can see that we've got our two positions, one long, one short. The current value at risk is 52 pounds. The proposed value at risk is zero. And so of course your incremental VAR here is minus 52 pounds. But that's because they're equally matched with the same but opposite position size. If we run this once more, but this time we have unequal values. 
then we should still see a big reduction in the value at risk, but this time it won't go to zero, as we can see here. So we're left after the second position has opened with a proposed value at risk of £8.70. So we've still seen a reduction in risk of £43.50. Now again, this is a decision that you need to make based on your own risk analysis. But for me, whenever adding a position to a portfolio actually reduces the risk, as you can see here, that's a position that I will pretty much always take. So that now concludes the code part of this series. You have everything that you need in order to calculate and measure portfolio risk using the value at risk metric. What I haven't done yet is concentrate on MT4 and MQL4. But in the next episode, I'm going to put that right. Because all of this code that we've looked at throughout the whole series can be used within MetaTrader 4 without any changes whatsoever. However, there are a couple of steps that you need to take in order to implement that without issues. And so I'm going to dedicate the next episode to showing you exactly what you need to do in order to use that code within MetaTrader 4. And then after this, we'll go on to a brand new but related topic of the Efficient Frontier, initially developed by Harry Markovitz. And this follows on really nicely from what we've done with the risk management analysis, because it incorporates that, but also adds the additional factor of expected return. Okay, so thank you for your time. If you've got value from this episode and the entire series, then please do remember to give me a thumbs up for this video and the previous videos that you've watched. But now, until next time, trade safe.